This is take one of my one take on the ZenBook S14. So of course, huge thank you to our friends over at ASUS for sponsoring this video. Now, the ZenBook S14 is a very special laptop. There are a few things they've done here that I think are really nice, but the main thing I wanna talk about is the idea of this design and what is inside. So first and foremost, the ZenBook S14 has a lot of the stuff that I liked in the ZenBook S16 that we did a video on a few months ago. It's got that nice Sarah aluminum finish, which is quite durable. So I've actually been using this laptop for a little over a month now in and out of my bag, and it's actually held up really well. It doesn't really get all that fingerprinty. But I love the actual form factor of this laptop. So if you look at it, it's all aluminum. It's got some nice little detail touches. So if you look at the little grill on the front here, you can see it has all these like intricate little patterns when it comes to the dots for the fan. It's really, really nice. But on top of that, it's got a really nice port selection for such a small laptop. So on the left side, you've got HDMI, a couple of Thunderbolt ports, as well as uh, your headphone jack. You also have a single USB-A on this side. The only criticism I have is I wish there was a USB-C on both sides of the laptop. I think that would be really nice to be able to charge on either side. Other things that are really nice, this keyboard is good. I'll say it's not like spectacular, but the keyboard backlighting is absurdly bright. Do you see how bright that is? I accidentally turned it up all the way in a dark room and I almost blinded myself with the keyboard. Now the trackpad is good. Now, I will say that I am pretty firmly in the camp that I want every Windows laptop to have a haptic touchpad. Like, I just think that that's just what everyone should do. I know it's a lot more expensive, but this is a good trackpad. It's really quite large considering how small this laptop is. And you get the little gestures. So on the right side, you can go up and down and it will adjust your brightness. And on the left side, you can adjust when you get it just quite right. You can adjust your volume. It's not like 100% perfect. It's like sometimes I have to do it twice, but what I find is, it's really natural just to be like watching a video and just go swipe down, swipe up a little bit, just to get a little bit more brightness. It's pretty good. Now, the speakers are a little bit of a low point, not like bass low, like low. Um, so they're bottom firing. So you can see that they come out through these little slits. They're fine, but I've noticed that they're very much dependent. So like if you play them on like a surface like this, they sound good. But the other day I was sitting on the couch it's one of those things where I kind of just had it slightly tilted and like just barely covering up that speaker. It was almost muted, like it was really quiet. I wish, even though it's such a small laptop, they could redirect the speakers up here. I know that that's kind of meant for cooling, but that would be some of the only criticisms that I have of this hardware because it feels absolutely terrific. Super thin, aluminum, like as a 14 inch laptop, this is the kind of form factor that I love to use. Keeping on with the form factor that I love to use, the screen is phenomenal. So. 2.8K, 14 inch OLED, runs at 120 Hertz. It looks great. Touchscreen, of course. Something I noticed, and actually, if you actually end up buying one of these laptops, something you should definitely take a look at. So it's a 120 Hertz display. But by default, in the My Asus software, it actually defaults to 60 Hertz when you're on battery. Now you can turn that off, it's just a setting. But I didn't realize, for a while I was using it on battery, and like, this doesn't feel like 120 Hertz. And you like check Windows settings and it's like showing 120. So just a little heads up, for battery savings, it does go down to 60 Hertz by default. You can just turn that off. But absolutely terrific display, good webcam, Windows hello, the whole kind of thing. But the hardware is just one side of this story, right? It's very similar to that S16 that we took a look at. You know, smaller, which I personally like. But what's really different about it is that little blue sticker that says Intel Core Ultra 7. So this is the Intel Lunar Lake chip, AKA the Intel Core Ultra 200 series. Now I've talked about this in the past. I took a look at another laptop that was powered by uh, Intel Core Ultra 7. And now that the embargo has lifted and there's no more holding back on benchmarks and all this kind of stuff. And I've spent a lot of time with these laptops. It's good. Like it's really, really good. If you're like me and you've taken a look at your fair share of laptops over the years, not that long ago, like literally like two years ago, if you saw a Intel powered laptop, especially something that's this thin, this light, you would expect fan noise, you'd expect heat, and you would expect decent battery life. That's just not really the case with this because it's good, good, and great. It's clear that when they were designing this chip, power efficiency was the name of the game because while it's quite good with single core performance, and that's kind of that sort of snappiness that you feel in everyday tasks, so when it comes to multi-thread tasks, it's actually the same or maybe even a little slower than some previous Intel stuff. So keep in mind that this is an eight core CPU. They've completely dropped hyper-threading, which means that if you're going to be doing like 3D rendering and lots of like video editing and really kind of like hammering that CPU, the performance is actually just kind of decent. But what you give up in return, or what you get in return when you give that up, 
is, I would say, a far better laptop for everyday use. So the CPU is still quite good. Um, you also have to consider that all these Core Ultra 200 laptops, they come with the RAM already on the package. So you only have two options, 16 or 32 gigs. You can't get more, you can't get less, which is fine. This one's outfitted with 32, which is personally pretty nice, especially because this does support Copilot Plus features, or at least it will soon. It has an MPU that's capable of that. But the graphics are surprisingly good, uh, especially when you compare it to some of the other sort of small and thin and light laptops out there. It's actually quite decent. You can do some gaming on this. Now, it's a thin and light laptop. You're really not going to want to do that. But the reason I bring all of this up is that the performance is good, but the battery life is phenomenal, right? I just really want to underline that. Phenomenal, underline. Because what you're getting here is not just all day battery life, right? Like laptops have claimed that for a very long time. But you're getting actually double digit hours of real use. So uh, a few just random sort of snapshots of, uh, as I've been using this laptop. Uh, the best I saw was an estimate in Windows of 16 and a half hours when I was watching just simple YouTube, sort of in like a darker room, the brightness was a little bit down, but like actually was like, hey, 16 hours. I watched for like an hour and a half, I burned like, I don't know, 4% of the battery or something silly. In a little bit more practical uses, I can actually get 10 hours of battery on this. Now, part of it is because even though it's such a small laptop, it actually has quite a large battery. So it's to somehow fit a 72 watt hour battery in this chassis, which is absolutely tiny. So I'm not sure how they did that, probably because if you open it up, it is all just battery on the inside. But that combined with the efficiency of Lunar Lake, the fact that it's never really warm to the touch, you very rarely hear fan noise unless you're doing something like gaming or you know 3D rendering or something like that, the fan will kick up. But I mean, look, this is a everyday premium laptop. Odds are you're not going to be stressing it at 100% very often. I certainly am not. And for regular everyday tasks, you're just not gonna hear that fan. You're not gonna feel any warmth pretty much anywhere. And the battery will legitimately last you an entire workday really comfortably. That is a phenomenal place to be because yes, in the past, this was a much more difficult thing, but now it's kind of what you expect, right? And Intel are right there in it. I mean, not that I'm gonna do a bunch of comparisons in a sponsored video, but if I was going to, I would tell you that this is right up there. You could put, especially when it comes to battery life, you could pit this against pretty much anything else, even including Snapdragon laptops, which I'll be honest, I like quite a lot, but this is actually, in real world use, actually just about as good, if not even better, when it comes to efficiency and you have all the added benefits of not having to deal with any like app compatibility issues and whatnot, or at least nothing on like a normal scale. So when you put this together, the Zenbook S14 is a really, really great laptop. And I say that, again, this is a sponsored video, but I really mean it because for me personally, I love this 14 inch form factor. It is small, it is thin, it is light, it just slides in your bag, you hardly even notice it's there. You've got good performance, quite good performance, excellent battery life. And then what ASUS have done is they have wrapped that sort of very solid Lunar Lake chip in a chassis that has very few downsides between the very solid display, between the good keyboard, the good trackpad, the very nice sort of port selection. The only things I would change on this if I had a magic wand for Gen 2, a little bit better speakers, ideally somehow placed in the grills and putting one of the USB-C ports on the right side so you can charge on either sides. But that's almost it. And that's a pretty impressive place to be. So if you would like to learn more about the ASUS ZenBook S14, definitely be sure to check it out at the link in the description. Thank you very much to ASUS for sponsoring this video. And now my friends, it is time to cut. I did it! I did it. I did it.